Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here. And if if you've been under a rock or you've just woken up, both equally likely, you <laughs> may have missed the news until you saw this flipping video title that it's been officially confirmed by Nintendo. This is not speculation, nothing like that. It is official that the Switch 2 or the Switch's successor will be backwards compatible with the Nintendo Switch. So Nintendo Switch software will work on Nintendo Switch's successor. How's about that? And not only that, but Felix is compatible with this chat. Whoa, yeah, it's it's lovely. It wouldn't be very nice if you had to buy a new Felix just to do this chat, would it? Oh, no, no, we'd, we'd run out of budget immediately. <laughs> um... So yeah, um, I'm, I'll take you through exactly what was revealed, and bear in mind this has been translated, but this has been translated officially. This is from Nintendo's official account, and this is from uh, the president, Shintaro Furukawa, and apologies for that pronunciation. This is Furukawa. At today's corporate management policy briefing, we announced that Nintendo Switch software will also be playable on the successor to Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch Online will be available on the successor to Nintendo Switch as well. Further information about the successor to Nintendo Switch, including its compatibility with Nintendo Switch, will be announced at a later date. So that's a little bit hedgy, they're not going into any details or anything like that, but it does, well, it very flagrantly says that, yep, it's going to be backwards compatible. However, that last line gives me a little bit of a, hmm, is it going to be fully compatible? Are there going to be some things that aren't? Because its compatibility uh, will be uh, announced at a later date, rather than just saying, yeah, it's going to work with everything. Maybe some things won't work. It's also interesting the wording with Nintendo Switch software. Does that also include physical? Are we only talking digital? I mean, I'd, I'd hope that it also includes physical. That would be lovely. That would be a must, I would say. But this news is great. I mean, I had kind of, like to me, it was just like, yeah, this is going to happen. But that it is confirmed, it's really, really nice. Not only for us people who have a lot of, lot of games, but for people who are looking to get into Nintendo and want to just, hey, I can buy the the next, the, the successor, but I can still get to play all these lovely games on the system. That is nice. Will there be boosts? We don't know, but it's, it's also really smart from Nintendo coming out and saying this ahead of Christmas and so people still buy games because you can still play them on the next thing. Yeah, it will no doubt impact hardware sales, which considering they've done, what was it, 146 million yep. is the latest count, it's which is, <laughs> uh, it's, it's more than I've ever sold, um, which had um, I think, I think I made that joke recently, but it doesn't matter. The fact is, 146 million <laughs> was um, it is, it is a lot, is a lot of hardware. And as you say, this means that people aren't going to go, oh, I won't bother buying, you know, Echoes of Wisdom or something because, you know, I, I don't, you know, I won't be able to play on my next console. People are going to go, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just get everything then. And maybe some people say maybe it'll run better, um, which for some people. They believe that won't be a hard thing. I think people are overblowing the performance of Echoes <laughs> of Wisdom, or rather the lack of performance, but still. Um, yeah, so if that is the case and there are boosts, I think that would be a very sensible solution, a very sensible direction to go. But at the same time, I don't know immediately of any instance where backwards compatible games have been improved in the performance area. There have been certain things in regards to like uh, Game Boy Advance could play Game Boy Color games and original Game Boy games and you could stretch them out and you could change the palette for original Game Boy games. But apart from that, there's nothing that immediately springs to mind for a direct successor. You could argue that like the Super Game Boy you know sort of had improvements but that was that's that wasn't really a successor it's kind of its own thing i don't know what do you think felix do you think they're going to go down that route or is it all smoke and mirrors i mean if i know nintendo they like to drip feed stuff and wouldn't this be a lovely opportunity to be like hey you can buy a ten dollar patch or like a switch successor thing for breath of the wild it will sell people will buy it um, it's what PlayStation has been doing a lot, you know, they've made like a PlayStation 5 version. Well, I mean, with the gap, what they've done is that the new games are also playable on PlayStation 4 and then you'll get a free upgrade. But you also have stuff like complete, well, like remakes and stuff, so it, it's interesting what they're gonna do. I feel definitely with games that release on both systems, there'll be 
a lesser and a better version if that's the route they go in. But I'm really unsure what they will do if it's just going to be a free patch. Like you say, it's not something that you see on like that often. Um, so yeah, I, I guess time will tell. Um, what do you think they will do with, with the physical? Is it just the, the classic 3DS example that they will make a slightly different cartridge, but you can still play I... it? I would, well, I'm not a betting man, but if I were, I would put money on that. It's the most <laughs> obvious solution, just like a little extra notch at the side, so you can't put new games in the old Switch, uh, but you can put the old ones in the new one. It, it just makes too much sense. It's such an elegant, simple solution that to me is just like, yeah, obviously, that just makes perfect sense. Um, but going back to what you were talking about regarding uh, the, the boosts and everything like that, we have heard, and this is admittedly conjecture, this is rumour, um, that there was an event where people were shown Breath of the Wild. This is, again, this is not confirmed or anything like that, but Breath of the Wild running with no loading screens or essentially, essentially zero loading screens, so near instant loading. That would be one area where I think you wouldn't even necessarily need a patch and i'm not a software developer so i don't know this for certain but would you really need a patch for faster loading times because there's already variable loading times on the switch if you've got a crap sd card it's going to take a hell of a lot longer to load than the internal memory for example and i think i think there are some situations where an sd card if it's a good one it's actually faster than than the internal memory could be completely wrong about that do not take that as red um but that's the sort of uh, that's the sort of world we're living in um also wireless communication can be slightly faster than wired which is ridiculous to my mind but again that's the world we're living in at the moment yeah also uh interesting thing to talk about is that they you know they keep talking about nintendo switch online that it will be compatible on the next system are they going to rebrand it or is it is it like ah oh, the next thing is also switch because that would make the most sense otherwise they have to change the whole branding of all that and and yeah what do you think alex i i, I noticed that as well and i thought yeah that it, it kind of in my mind, the fact that it's going to be, you know, Switch stuff is going to be compatible. Nintendo Switch Online is going to be compatible. I mean, this could just be a Nintendo moment and it does get rebranded, but it does kind of suggest that it's going to be called like the Super Switch or the Nintendo Switch Elite or the Nintendo Switch Next or something equally uh, maybe awful. Maybe not as awful as new Nintendo Switch. That would be grotesque if they did that but at this you know they did that with the 3ds so i don't want to make too many <laughs> too many assumptions shall we say let's uh let's just say nintendo well they also titled the wii u so <laughs> i'm really really pleased also to see the nso being uh brought over to the next thing because you know there's i feel like there's a lot of value now there's like the n64 games like i mean it has slowed down a bit with games but it just means that they'll keep adding new stuff to this service which recently got nintendo music uh for, for no extra cost just to the base yeah base i thing. thought that was a really nice bonus yeah so so it's just really nice that they're not leaving everything behind and starting up something new like they've done in the past now they're sticking with with nso and and uh yeah that's just bloody lovely in my opinion i must admit and i'm probably going to get certain comments for this but i was initially against the idea of not owning the uh the games on nso and just being like oh just let us buy things from the virtual console as time has gone on i am a convert i'm not sure i need <laughs> to own a digital copy of tennis on the nes you know and i'm not saying i would have bought that but you know there's only so many times i've already i already bought stuff on the wii i already bought stuff on the wii u i don't want to have to keep buying it and at the end of the day nintendo's never going to sell their games for 99p or something for like the original mario bros but a little you know sort of monthly payment i mean i worked this out recently i have the expansion pack but i share that with eight other people using the family system so i pay the grand total of two pence a day for nintendo switch online with the expansion pack and for that, I can play all the games I want. And if I really want to own one of these games, I can go out and I can buy a secondhand physical copy. It's not ideal, but that's just the situation we're living in. And it means I don't have to make any major decisions. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm an NSO convert. I think it is, it is properly the better way to do things rather than, hey, you can buy Donkey Kong Jr. Maths. I mean, it would be nice if they would carry over and you didn't have to buy them every time. But I will also say I've had a lot of use, especially of 
And so, um, you know, with the N64, I did all my streams with the N64 controller, which that is just really nice. A uh, nice thing that you can get to experience. Like, I, I think it's my most played, at least on my Switch OLED, my most played software is NSO N64, because I've played, you know, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mars, <laughs> the different Mario parties. I wouldn't have bought a lot of these, like uh, a lot of the Mario parties, at least the older ones. I played them because they were in the service and it's like, hey, it's here. I might as well try it. And it's 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 really nice with with I mean, I do wish we had a few more games. Uh, they are very slow to drip feed some of these. But at the end of the day, it's just nice that they're bringing it over. I am with you on, on this, Alex. I don't need to own every game. I mean, I do own quite a few games myself, but a lot of the older stuff is just really expensive to get. And yeah, I think in an absolutely ideal world, we'd have the option of both. Yep. But that that's inelegant and people would be like oh what so i get an so and then i have to buy the games it muddies the communication mm -hmm. it makes people second guess i can completely see why they didn't do it and if they're gonna go for one or the other you know i think overall in fact uh, since nso launched i probably spent less than 40 or 50 pounds since it launched mm -hmm on like and that's years worth and yes that is using the family system which is you know not everyone can absolutely do but you know it's not like eight members of the family i've just got friends and well some family so <laughs> but even so it's just sort of like that that's so cheap it's so cheap it makes it worthwhile it's kind of like how when net Netflix was first launched and it was sort of like oh it's so cheap and so easy that piracy actually went down and now look where we are <laughs> I just uh, read over the, the Furukawa thing and uh, when you touched about the Nintendo Switch including its compatibility with Nintendo Switch, do you think they could be talking about like with controllers? Old controllers, are they going to be compatible with the game outside of games? Because will it be so that you can only use the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller with Nintendo Switch games and not with the newer ones? Or, yeah, I'm um, because, um, you know, my hope is that they will make a very cool controller for the next Switch with lots of cool features and stuff yeah i'd like to hear your thoughts about it alex it's entirely possible they've kept it so vague it could mean anything and i think that is very deliberate it could be that um the new controller or whatever it is the new joy con equivalent maybe doesn't have all the features of the joy cons for example uh like the infrared sensor i would not be surprised in the slightest if that went because nothing really uses it beyond a few very select examples and so you know things like also i suppose you could make the argument that labo wouldn't work because it's it's too sort of like specific to the architecture and too specific to the size and the feel of the joy con physically so it may well be that they're just trying to they can't say all of it yeah. because even some of their own software even though no one would give a monkeys <laughs> it d doesn't work you know yeah 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 no i think you'd totally right could also mean that only select titles work <laughs> we'll just have to we'll just have to wait and see i mean the one thing i do have hope gets added to nso is like better you know interacting with other people on the switch uh you know making a live chat getting to talk there maybe screen share that would be i mean that is one of the reasons i really like my playstation is that i can talk with people all across the globe and I can share my screen and we can kind of, it's like we're sitting in the same room and playing the same game and be like, oh, look at this, look at this. And the other piece of people can interact. I really hope that Nintendo takes some inspiration in that and, and just improves the online experience because, you know, you can play together, but but it is quite lacking, I feel. So uh, yeah, please, Nintendo, please and thank you. We, I mean, we've got that to a degree with um, like the NSO, uh, things like the N64 games and the SNES games where you can play it's essentially screen sharing it's not it's kind of like running two copies of the same game in tandem which i think is arguably the better way to do it if you can pull it off but then you just need to play with someone from the states and it all falls apart so <laughs> you know uh, swings and roundabouts and all that sort of thing yeah I, I think it's mostly like being able to do voice chat on the switch on on the next thing which i'm um, i i don't expect it to be there but that would be i would be so happy if you could just see who's online and be like hey you want to chat for a bit and we can play this game instead of like having to go into the dms and all that stuff what are you talking about we've got uh, we've got the nintendo switch online app we can do the voice chat through that which everyone always does because it's good <laughs> it's so convenient having it on a I, completely different platform if you could just i mean to be honest in th in theory 
it makes kind of a lot of sense, and I've always said this, but the execution is so poor that it doesn't. <laughs> if you could just load up your phone and, you know, sort of select, oh, I'm going to create a room on your phone, it doesn't, you know, sort of take resources away from the Switch, which is a portable device. It means that, um, you know, sort of the internet maybe is less, I don't know, maybe it's more crowded. Uh, I'm not a network engineer. Surprise, surprise. But also it means that you don't have to interrupt your game and use your controller. You can quickly just look down at your phone. Blah, 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 blah. So I can see some advantages to it there. But at the same time, the execution that they've gone for is rubbish <laughs> and no one uses it. I mean, ideally, you'd want to be able to do both. Have the app where you can see everyone who's online, just yeah, as you can do. have I them mean, linked. Yeah, exactly. So you can control it from your Switch, but it's, you know, kind of casted to your phone or something like that. So it's not using processing power, no, but you have controls app. on your Switch. Yeah. But boom Done. Cool. There we go. We fixed Nintendo. Yay. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes. There you are. That's uh, that's the hot tip. That's exactly what's going to happen. We we leaked it. <laughs> uh, <for laughs> full disclosure, I made all that up, obviously. But you know, no. you never know with people on the internet. You've got to be clear, haven't you? But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you check that subscribe button? I think you'll find it's backwards compatible with Nintendo Switch 2. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. This is Felix, and also bye bye from here. This was a joke compared to Nintendo always saying, This is this person. Oh, <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> where's he going with it? <laughs>